Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to explore the transaction code SU01 in SAP S4 HANA using GUI. Let's navigate into the transaction. So SU01, hit on enter. And here you can see the start screen. So this transaction is used, as you can see, for the user maintenance. First of all, you can see over here a header bar. So we can either create a user or a technical user via this transaction code. So this means we are talking about real people here who will receive an SAP user. Whereas this technical user is meant only for background processing activities. And here we even distinguish between different technical users. I will show you this in a second. Next off, you can see we have a button called change. So we can actually change existing users. Let's actually type in a user here. And then we can hit on the change button and now we could change the details. I will explain you all the details in a second when we create our own user. Let's go back for now. Also, we can display the user via this button. Let's go back. We can delete the user, copy it. Let's hit on this one. This is actually a useful functionality so that we do not need to create new users from scratch, but we can create new users based on existing ones and then choose here all of the parts that should be copied. For now, we will leave it as is. We can lock the user or even unlock the user via this button. And we can also change the password for a user if the user forgot his or her password. So far so good, we will now create a new user from scratch. Therefore, you must insert here a new name and then we need to select user. So now you can see we have here different tabs. Let's go through them. In the address tab, we can state some personal information like the title, the last name, which is actually required, first name, academic title, and also the language. This is here used for correspondence, we got some work center information so that we can clearly identify, for instance, the function of this user, the department, and where exactly this user is located in our company. We have some communication information and also we can see here company information. So we can actually click on this button to assign a new company address, then insert here the name of our company, hit on continue, and we can provide all the company information if needed. Then just hit on enter. Now if we scroll down again, you can see that information was copied. Okay, let's go to the next step. Here we have the logon data. Here you can see the alias. So this is actually an alternative login name, so to say. So let's imagine that our username is quite complex with lots of different numbers and so on. Then we can insert here an alias in a more simple way. Also, this alias is used if a company uses multiple SAP systems. So we can store the alias to maintain a common username across all these systems. And last but not least, this can also be used for single sign on solutions. Next off, we have the user type. This is what I told you before. So right now we have here dialog user. However, you can see that there are four other users existing. We have the system user. So this user is only used for background processing and also communication with another system. For example, an RFC call or also an application link enablement. Then we have the communications data user. Also here, it's not possible to log on to ZAP GUI with this user. And the difference to the system user is that in this case, we can use the communication user also for external RFC calls, but with a human involved. So meaning that the system user is completely technical, while this user here has a human component, so to say. Then we have the reference user. So this here can be used as a reference for other users, meaning that we can create such a user, assign a couple of roles, and then when we create another user, we can assign this other user our reference user, so that the other user inherits the role of the reference user. Last but not least, there is a service user, and this user is actually used for a larger anonymous group of users. So meaning that two or even more individuals can utilize this user. Okay, for now we will leave it to a dialogue user. We have here another field called security policy. We can actually set a security policy for certain users if we like, and this will apply certain checks, so to say. So for instance, let's imagine that tester three is a very powerful user, like an administrator. Then we can assign a security policy to this user so that he or she is forced, for instance, to change the password each and every month. But you should really only assign a security policy to certain power users, because this could end up in lots of unnecessary bureaucracy. Next off, you can see we have here a section for the password. So we can either type in here a password on our own manually, and then once we save the user, 
he or she can log in with this initial password, so to say, and then change this password. Or we can click on this button over here to generate a password for the user. So now you can see the password was generated and over here the password is stated. So we can copy this text and give it to the user. Okay. Let's scroll down a bit. We have another field called user group and those user groups here we can use to assign multiple users to them, but we will only use this if we want to distribute our user maintenance among several user administrators, meaning that only an administrator will have the power to edit the users belonging to a certain group. Then we have the validity period. So with that we can state from when to when this user master record should be valid. And if we leave it blank, then it's valid indefinitely. And we have another data section, but this is only used if the user should appear in a so-called accounting exit under this particular number. And we can also assign a cost center, but this is a free text field. Next off, we have a tab called SNC. SNC stands for Secure Network Communications. And this tab here is actually utilized if we want to use the so-called single sign-on feature of SAP so that the user does not need to insert the username and password all the time, but can simply click a button and will access the system. However, you can see in my system, this is not active. Next off, we got a default section. So here we can actually assign some default values to our user. So for instance, the start menu, our user should see when logging into the system, the logon language, decimal notation, as well as the date and time format. Further down, we can even assign a time zone and a flag for the computer aided test tool. But this is really a special topic. In the parameters section, we can assign different parameters to our user. For instance, we could assign here the parameter BUK and set the parameter to 1010, meaning that whenever the user now enters a transaction, then the company code will be filled with the value 1010. Okay, in the role section, we could now assign different roles to our user and also restrict the start and end date. This I have shown you extensively in another video of mine. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. So make sure to check it out. Also, you can see over here, we could insert a reference user from whom our new user should inherit all the values. Then we have here profiles tab, and actually this will be filled when we enter our roles. So normally we would not directly assign a profile to our user, but do it via the roles. Then we have a group section, and this will make it easier for us to, for instance, mass maintain our users via transactions such as SU10. Next off, we have a personalization tab, where we could maintain person-related settings using so-called personalization object keys, as you can see. There is a license data tab where we could specify the contractual user type ID, but this is only used if we use the so-called central user administration of SAP. Last but not least, there's user attributes tab, which is also used to group our users by the user type. Let's actually inspect the search help here. You can see monitoring, development support, and share draft. And here you could design user attributes if they are customized. At the end, you can always select this button to check whether there are any errors, and then you can save the user so it will be stored in your system. Then you can provide the user data to your colleague so he or she can log on into the system. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. Also make sure to subscribe to my Patreon, where I post lots of configuration documents and where we also have a free community chat. The link is in the bio of my channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time.